I'll bring the June 13th meeting of the Berlin School Committee to order. Um, first, I want to thank, or not thank, but I want to welcome Angela to her first regular meeting. Thank you. And Dr. DePool, will this be your last meeting for Berlin? You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So yes. <laughs> 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 it was a fast year. Yeah. Didn't it? Yeah. it went really yeah. fast. It did. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, thank you for everything. Long Always my pleasure. <laughs> it was a, I enjoyed working uh, yeah, working with all three committees. I uh, uh, all of them. Uh, of course, I still have you know, lots of connections with everyone in Berlin. I enjoyed being here. Enjoyed working with the committee. I found the committee very easy to work with. Very professional. Um, ran very good meetings. I think you know we all worked for the best interests of the children of. Uh, of, uh, of Berlin, which is what it's all about, and uh, so I, uh, I did. I, uh, I did enjoy my uh, my tenure here. It's a lot of work, but uh, we got a lot done. A lot we got a lot done, and I think next year done. we're certainly off to a, a, um, a very good uh, mm -hmm. a very good start for next year with yep. uh, um, both budgets. I mean, the region uh, and uh, and the Berlin budget here. So, and I think we'll be pretty set with personnel and, uh, and school choice and everything else should be in order. So we should be should be off to a. A great start. Next year will be a very busy year, you know, for you. I mean, obviously, with uh, with the transfer over to the uh, to the new high school, which so far is on budget and on time, and uh, the new middle school curriculum, which will be developed at the end of the year, and uh, working with Berlin with teachers, uh, obviously, in terms of the, what the budget will look like here for the Berlin Memorial School, high school, new Chapter 70 reimbursement numbers to be calculated. So it'll be a challenging year, but I think moving into the high school should be. Very, very exciting. So I've enjoyed it. Thank you for bringing me on board. We thank, <laughs> thank you so much you for everything. Very much. It was my pleasure. I believe we're working on the approval of payroll and payable warrants. Chris? Yes. Can I ask the superintendent a question? Sure. You're fussy about the answer, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> I would say, uh, regardless of the uh, of things that I think are fairly self-evident, um, like the construction of the new high school, the movement of the six grades, and things that we've talked about uh, at at length, I, I think, from my my perspective, um, I, I think that you we need to um, re uh, start to re-energize and once again begin to have conversations about regionalization K through 12. I think that uh, something that we're going to have to take uh, take on in the future years. I think, from a financial point of view, uh, the uh, the amount of money, for example, and just on uh, transportation reimbursement that we miss miss out at the elementary levels is something we need to consider. Uh, just the workload of working with with three independent districts. I mean, we're one out of five districts in the state that has this kind of a, a setup. In the past, a lot of the issues were, and I think right, rightly so, because it would concern me too. Would be control of the elementary schools by the by the local communities. And I think that's a that was a pressing issue, has been a pressing issue, and I think that needs to be addressed. I think that can be addressed with some of the new funding formulas that uh, Dees has approved uh, recently in terms of regionalization, being able to identify money for elementary is almost like creating a budget within a budget. And uh, since that has has come along uh, this this year and. Uh, Massachusetts Association of Regional School Committees uh, have been attending their meetings. That's one of their so central focus points. Uh, since that's come along, I, I think it's worthwhile beginning to have that, that conversation. Uh, that being said, uh, it, that should be a, a gradual education of people and a gradual exploration of those issues as we go along. I mean, to use a baseball analogy, since it's baseball weather, it's, you don't bring the uh, uh, the uh, pitcher out of the bullpen and expect him to throw 101 miles an hour pinpoint accuracy with no warm-up. So I think people need to have time to discuss it, to have questions answered, to be questions on local control. I think that's a, that, that's a, a, a question that has to be addressed, and I don't mean just addressed in a global cursory way, but very, very specifically. But I would say, of, of anything, that would be the, the major uh, – and if I was to be, be your career superintendent, I mean, quite candidly, I'd be, I'd be starting to push that agenda. Okay, uh, but um, other than that, I think the system is very good hands. I mean, student achievement is very is, is excellent at, at all three schools. Uh, great cadre of professional uh, person uh, people on, on the faculty, uh, parents, great students. I mean, just got a lot of things going for you here uh, in the district. It's in a high, it is a high performing district. So, I think due to a lot of those factors, from 
the students that we receive, uh, the education that the parents give them at home, the nurturing that they get at home, uh, the community, very supportive communities. And I, I mean, we, we pass up an override for building a new high school during the Great Recession. <laughs> I mean, I think that speaks for itself and, and just the willingness to support the education here. So um, I'm sure that we continue, but if it, and, and the number one thing on the agenda would, yeah, I think you need to take a, need to take a look at that again. Yep, you're welcome. Sorry, so long-winded. No, okay. <laughs> Did it answer your question? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have a consent agenda that has <clears throat> May 7th, May 9th, May 17th, and May 24th um, open session meetings. I believe they're all open session, right? Yep. Um, minutes to approve. Do I hear a motion to approve? I second it. Okay. Um, is there anything thing that you thought? I just had one thing, and that was on the May 17th um, minutes under B. It says uh, Miss Keith moved to appoint Angela Yildiz to the Berlin Boylston Regional School Committee. And Ms. Keith seconded it. Oh, yeah, can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can do that. I think it was probably Ruth that made the motion. Okay. But other than that, I thought they looked great. So with that change, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Um, we did have a communication. Did you get my email today? Yeah. I About this one communication? No, I didn't. No, okay. I, must I have copied been. you. I sent it to Cheryl so she'd have a copy. Yeah, I was at the high school point, 2 o'clock on, so I, no, I didn't okay. get back. Okay. Um, the uh, communication is from uh, Nikki McCoon. It says on the front, thank you. And dear Ruth and Chris, thank you for my very thoughtful parting gift. It's lovely. I also want to thank you both for your support over the last three years. It's been my pleasure getting to know both of you. You are both true champions for our children, and we are lucky to have you. Best of luck in the future, and thanks again, Nikki. So, put that into the record. Uh, petitions and audiences relating to items on the agenda. Moving on to the reports, do we have a CPAC report? I don't believe so. Um, superintendent's report. Okay. Uh, just a building update for the public. Um, we, uh, the school building committee, has been very busy with uh, reviewing and approving many items in uh, technology and uh, furniture acquisitions uh, before they're going out to bid. And, uh, as you know, the school building uh, budget is not really sufficient from the state to uh, cover the items that we need uh, to purchase. So. People have been working very hard to uh, prioritize uh, those items. Uh, in addition, we've also been reviewing the corrective uh, action plan by the contractor, CTA, regarding the uh, subpar uh, concrete pour in the auditorium. Uh, in concert with uh, our OPM and, and the architects, uh, we anticipate viewing another mock-up on June 14th, tomorrow night, at uh, 5 o'clock um, at the new high school uh, to see if the what they're proposing will meet the uh, uh, specifications and satisfaction to the school building uh, committee. Also uh, happy to report that the school building committee also approved uh, $70,000 from the owner's contingency account for the midwinter move uh, that was requested uh, by the uh, school committee. So that's for just uh, edification, uh, edification uh, for, the, uh, for the public. Uh, roof inspection, I mean, Courtney and I will, will chat about this a little bit. As you know, we, we were fortunate enough at town meeting to have then pass uh, uh, or an article for us to go up and start to take a look at the, uh, the roof uh, at the Berlin Memorial School uh, so we can begin to get an idea about what is uh, right and what's obviously wrong on the roof so we can begin to think about uh, bid specifications and, and put that into the hopper for uh, a warrant for, uh, for repair uh, on, the, uh, on the town floor. So do you have more to you want to add on that? It's JCH, right? Yes, JCH Consulting, and they've already been to the school and, and did did uh, you know did some of the work already, but they'll 
be doing more into July because um, the article was um, for next year. So they just did just, just, just a little bit of work so far. So they really have to do that in July. Yeah. We've been very happy so. with what they've done at other, other projects, mm -hmm. uh, particularly like in, uh, in Boyle. So they did a really, really nice job. So we have a lot of confidence in them being able to identify what needs to be done and also helping us to generate um, some specifications and some cost parameters on, on whatever we find up there. You know, sometimes yeah. these walks start off very benign and then you find one thing and you find another thing and then you find another thing and you find another thing. So but this is the, the beginning to find out you know, what is uh, ailing us uh, on the roof so we can, uh, we can correct it. Don't be afraid to call Mr. Jebo. Uh, teacher resignations, we have uh, two this evening. Uh, one is Megan uh, Allstrand, uh, who's resigned, uh, and I'll, I'll have Carol you know, elaborate a little bit more on this uh, grade four position, and also uh, recently, very recently, uh, Rachel Peeney. Do you want to speak a little more to that? I was hoping you'd take this one. I'm so sad oh, to I'll talk about these two, okay. but, I will, but I will. No, only because it's, it's so hard to talk about, but I will miss both of these young educators very much. They have been such an asset to our school. I've watched them grow into just such excellent, excellent teachers. Um, and so I thank them for their service commitment to the kids. Um, I'm proud of them too. They both are moving on to other school districts um, where I know they'll, they'll serve those districts well. They'll be very strong leaders there. Uh, um, Meg is headed to Millbury and she'll be teaching second grade and Rachel is, will be in Wellesley and she'll be teaching kindergarten. So um, congratulations to them. I'm happy and I'm sad for our loss here in the district. So that will not necessitate any, any rift this year at Burley Memorial, and I've already communicated that to the representatives here in the building, and they understand that, so we'll, we've closed that out. So that's, that's all over now. Um, and, uh, the, and we will post the kindergarten position. Yes. So we, we, will, we will post that position. Okay. After tonight's nice meeting. Oh, are we allowed to ask the reason for why they left? Or, or would that well, be I think something it, in an executive Well, I think it session? might be pure speculation on that part. Um, you may want to ask them. <laughs> it's okay to ask them. I mean, I feel like Rachel knew that she was, you know, the last hired. And with, of course, the current fifth graders going back to one. I just wondered if that was what caused her to start her search or if there were other reasons. Possibly. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask that, but I think it helps us as a school committee know yeah. that teacher job security is very important, if that was part of the reason. I don't know what I'm allowed to ask or not ask. <laughs> Shall we say they're very intelligent people, uh, very dedicated teachers, and obviously when we start talking about the prospects of RIF happening at the schools, uh, I think they investigate you know, their own situations in terms of how RIP is done at the school, and then uh, they make the, this, some decisions sometimes predicated uh, upon that. Uh, I, it's my understanding it's not, not leaving because of any extreme dissatisfaction or anything of this type of nature or anything else. We want to mislead the public that there's some reason, big reason why they're leaving. I, I think your, your suspicions are correct. But, uh, Job yeah. security, I mean, at this point, because of the not, no need for an additional fifth grade and possibly next year if we are going to take sixth grade up to Tahanto there would be another position that would be that wouldn't be needed at Berlin Memorial. And intelligent people make intelligent decisions. Yeah. Will the sixth grade teacher be moving up to Tahanto with the sixth grade? That's a process that well, there's no, there seems to be, sometimes there's a, there was, I think back in August, there was a, a myth that was out there that the teachers at the elementary school had a right to transfer, I use those two words very, very specifically, right and transfer to the region. Um, that was an incorrect perception. I mean, these are three separate legal entities, okay? Three separate different contracts, three separate sets of seniorities. So there is no tr inherent transfer you know, whatsoever. So there would be a riff, not just here, but at Boston Elementary, also of those sixth grade positions. Those teachers can certainly apply for those jobs if they have the appropriate certification to apply for those jobs. 
Um, they may not wish to, depending upon where the, their seniority status is. You know, at this point in time, they may wish to stay where they are and exercise their pumping rights within those individual schools. So that's a decision that they would have to make at, at that particular point in time. So it'd be pending upon, they would have to apply and, and uh, they would have to have the, obviously the requisite certification to teach you know, in that, that new configuration. Or they may, not, they may decide not to apply also and keep the seniority at, at, at these particular levels. I mean, it wasn't really a myth. It was actually a statement from Brian McDermott that said they would not be losing their jobs, you know, because of the, 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 uh, the transfer of the sixth grade. That might be his interpretation of the statute, but I think mine is vetted out. In, in, well, yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. That was what was presented to the public. Yep. Well, I don't think they are losing their jobs. Who's that? The sixth grade teachers would not be losing their jobs. There would be a job elimination at Earl Memorial. If it happened to be sixth grade, then we would do the reduction in we force. We go through right. the re re procedures according right. to the contract. Mm -hmm. Right. And I guess this is a point when, we, if we if we were to ever regionalize K through 12, it gives the administration the ability to make easier decisions of moving personnel around. Oh, it makes you much more flexible in a wide variety of areas. Not just that, but funding and. Transportation, it allows you to do a, a great many more things than, than you can do right now with three separate legal entities. Can I answer your question? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it does. I just had one other question regarding that. Is like when Megan, Megan accepted her position first, new position first, so was Miss. Peeney notified right away that no reason to do a notification of Ms. Oh. Peeney. We have to go through the RIF procedures. That's not how it works. Yeah. Okay. This is very yeah. specific. This has to be done in concert with the uh, with the association here. We get to sit down together. We do the RIF. We identify the first person on the RIF list, and then we go step by step. The next person is notified. They're given their rights on the RIF. Uh, they they're asked if they want to exercise their rights on the RIF. This is all done in writing. Okay. We'd, involvement of the association, uh, they exercise their rights. If that affects someone else, someone else is brought in, they're notified of the rift, they have a right to exercise their rights until we get to the final end. Gotcha. Okay. Step right. by step. Okay. 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 Yeah, we're talking to people's jobs here, so I mean, <coughs> we go, you know, follow this very specific, yeah, very specific process. Law, you have to that's correct. The teacher's mm -hmm. And a contract, that's absolutely. Really complicated. Yeah. Very complicated. It can be. Yeah. You know, I yeah. did it in less than one time. It took me two and a half months to straighten out RIF. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. We're moving on to the Director of Financial Services report. Okay, I prepared the um, General Fund Budget Report number four um, with projections again through June 30th and have looked at um, every single employee, projected right out every single one. I went through every single one of my payroll sheet, um, went through contracts, um, tried to think of and identify anything at all that could be out there that even if it's not even, um, hasn't been processed yet or haven't received an invoice and maybe even doesn't have a purchase order, but I'm aware of it, it I expect it to be in that <laughs> projection through June 30th column. Um, so you will see some positive and negative variances. Um, for instance, I actually had to add a line. Um, we did have a legal settlement that we, um, I have on here, just to make sure that that's shown here also. Um, and, and we'll talk about that in exec session tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, I made sure that I did um, account for that also in the budget. I did find that we were able to accommodate it in the budget this year, which I thought was um, excellent. Um, so I have not had a chance and opportunity to do all the transfers. Obviously, if you see pluses and minuses, you know, I, I, those transfers will be done. Um, let's see if there's anything that really stands out. I mean, that was one of the big ones there. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, also, Judy Valencourt did go through all of her special education accounts. And you will notice if you look towards the end with regard to the special education accounts, you will see a number of large pluses and minuses, too. Um, and that would be on the last page with regard to SPED tuitions um, and throughout the entire budget in various areas with regard to SPED. So she even told me what she could release to from the originally budgeted amount and I've also incorporated that in the, in the budget report. 
Um, and as you know, we already accounted for um, school choice. It was planned to be budgeted for school choice and circuit breaker. Um, now, so we do have a balance um, at the end there of around $91,000. But first of all, that's just projection. Second of all, um, with regard to food service, the school lunch program, as you know, there have been some issues with regard to that, and we have been budgeting in general <coughs> until I actually close out everything. All the expenditures in food service, I will not know until that <coughs> time whether or not I will need to reclassify some of the expenses into the general fund. Okay, so I don't want you to think this, this large balance may not be anything like that in the end. Also, um, very recently, um, Judy has um, spoken with me about some issues that have come up with regard to special education that were not known prior. Um, she's been working very diligently with regard to those issues and to the extent possible we will try to do some prepayment um, because obviously those aren't budgeted in FY13. As we know the budgets were very tight for FY13 so to the extent possible um, I will be doing that. And I also will be looking at um, because as you know even though when you're planning the budget and you're planning especially with regard to school choice we had planned initially on a certain amount for school choice, a certain amount for circuit breaker. The circuit breaker was only 19776 and we do have to leave that as is because the regulations only allow you to carry forward what was received in the current year. Anything from a prior year must be spent or they will, they will take it back. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, um, we don't need to do anything with that. But I may take a look when I get towards the end um, after looking at food service, everything being processed and also to the extent we can pay um, prepay special ed, I may look at whether or not we really need to utilize to that full amount of school choice. Because as you know, even though I was telling all of you that we need to be very careful we're not building up a war chest, okay? But when I was making those statements to the three school committees, we were hadn't even begun the very um, sort of precarious budget preparation process. So, and as you know, um, we did utilize a lot of school choice. Um, so if I can kind of add, you know, back a little bit of a buffer there, just a little bit in case something comes up in FY13, I, I will do that too. So I'm just kind of, you know, playing it out as we go through June 30th, looking at all of these different areas to see how we can best um, be set up not only through FY12, but also for, for FY13 to the extent possible. But I didn't know if you had any particular questions. Um, no, you haven't had. I apologize. I don't, there's, uh, there's a lot of work to preparing this very detailed report. It takes many hours, to be honest with you. I literally would love to get it to you, like, the Thursday before, but it's usually not possible. So I apologize. You don't really have a chance to look at it. Um, if you got it to us the Thursday before, I think there probably would be some changes, right? Yeah, I actually, right? I had to go in today and make, yeah, <laughs> so, because we processed a lot of things um, in the last few days. So the game plan, to, to summarize, if I can, and Courtney, mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, if I said this, state this incorrectly, please correct me, is that, I mean, uh, obviously as we go through the year, we'll take the cafeteria into account, any other outstanding um, bills that come in, we'll apply that towards the bottom line figure. Also, if we can do any prepays uh, for SPED, we're allowed to do, basically it's about 25% as a rule of thumb, so to speak, on prepays, we will do that, and that will take pressure off. Uh, some of the FY uh, 13, uh, 13 budget, uh, which will put you in a much better light, you know, for next year for anything mm -hmm. that, that may come up. Um, and that's basically, and that's basically. And because those things were unanticipated too. Right. I mean, they truly were not, they were unanticipated and um, were not budgeted for FY 13. So this is a good way of still keeping us okay for the beginning, starting July 1st. So without the budget having will be that whole, to deal with. instead of yeah. starting off with so, unanticipated yes. expenses and spend. From the get-go, yeah. <laughs> so, and that can happen, as we know, with special education. So, and I'm sorry. What what did you say was the use it or lose it? What line was that? You didn't quite use those terms, but yeah. So that's why I'm not. I'm not sure what you. Circuit breaker. Circuit, circuit breaker. Oh, okay. Where circuit you have breaker to spend is it or the <coughs> state takes yes, it back. Yes, yes, and the that's breaker. funds that we get from the state. Um, okay. Supposedly to to offset. Um, it does, but not to, to any way of the extent that probably we'd like it to, but um, special about education. About circuit breaker works too. Okay. It's basically mm -hmm. to relie uh, relief for very high, high special education mm -hmm. costs to help districts out, uh, which I started probably about six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a complicated mm -hmm. formula, but it's anything over four mm -hmm. times foundation level mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. 
what's yeah. left over times the percentage that the state applies to circuit breaker, which varies every single year. That makes it right? Yes, and then whatever they appropriate, the expenditure, not only the 2.5 <laughs> or the 5, but also the extent that they, that they fund it with their appropriation. So sometimes we end up figuring 55%, 65%, any kind of guess for the subsequent year. But what I meant is that um, that's actually a revolving fund, and so is school choice. And many revolving funds, uh, every single thing in municipal finance, municipal school finance, is governed by mass general law, unlike many states. Every single thing, every account, what you can and can't do, what you can spend it on, every aspect of it. So circuit breaker, what I meant by that is that funds that you receive in FY12, that's our current fiscal year, we budgeted those, we took those into consideration for budgeting for FY13 because if you don't, you will lose it. So, but it's, it's good to do that anyway because if you already have it in the bank, you should be using it to offset because you don't know what can happen with special education. You can suddenly get a $250,000 item. It can happen overnight. <laughs> you know, it, it won't one student. It, it could, that can happen. Right. And so the money you're receiving in the subsequent year, meaning FY13, you have that as a buffer to either utilize if something large came up or if you're still left whole at the end of the year, you would budget the full amount in FY14. And that's how that works. School okay. choice does not work that way. You can, hand, you can carry that over. But um, as I was mentioning earlier, previous, previous meetings, um, DESE has indicated recently that they have starting to uncover that a number of school districts are building up a huge war chest with these, student, these um, school choice funds and they're not to build up a bunch of money. You, you should be using them to offset um, educational expenditures. And if you're looking at it from the municipal side of the table, you can see where municipalities were getting upset because if, if schools aren't utilizing those funds to offset the educational expenditures, then the tax rate will be higher. Mm -hmm. But we have a nice balance of, you know, they have been using these funds for a number of years. Um, it's not that they weren't at all. It's just that for this particular current fiscal year, for budgeting for FY13, it was such a tough budget for, for all three districts that we did need to use it even more than we probably would have liked to do. But you can carry that over from year to year. Okay. That was lesson number one in <laughs> finance. <laughs> we'll follow that up later. <laughs> one of 3,000. I know. <laughs> And then just after a while, it's trying to kind of get to know all the. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you all set, Courtney? Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know if you had any questions about Does anybody any, have any questions? balances or. But it's looking very good. Yeah. You know, so it's in the yeah. black, and we even you know can have some decisions being made, to it, which is great. I mean, you can't be in a better position, I think, for the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's see, principal's report. I wanted to start first by, since this was our volunteer week, we had volunteer appreciation breakfast the other day, um, right before field day, and so many folks turned out. So I wanted to thank, again, all of the volunteers at our school who just make it such a special place and, and do so much extra for our children. Um, just amazed from reading to our children and helping with copying and helping teachers and just anything they can do, they're always there. I can make a phone call and get you know a group of folks uh, to to help at the school, and they were certainly out there um, on field day as well with their volunteering. We even had some volunteers from Coles coming over to to help us out, so that was fun. Um, I, also, a special thank you to all of the the volunteers who helped the, us get that float together from Link. Um, we laughed about it because it was something I said to them maybe a year or so ago and the I kind of thought came along and I said, hey, we really should do something for the Bicentennial Parade. We, we really, maybe we can do a float. I don't know how to make a float, but nobody else, well, other Ooh, people did, thank goodness. Um, and they <laughs> thought I was kidding and they thought maybe I'd forget about it, um, but <laughs> I didn't. And so they said, okay, we're doing it and uh, spent nights and hot af Saturday afternoon working in the salt shed to make this float and the kids had a ball and we all were still smiling about it. It was just so, so much fun, the whole thing from start to finish. So it was neat. So thanks it to everybody. Beautiful. Thank you. It was. It was so, kid it was just so like child friendly. You know, it looked like they made it and it was just beautiful. It was just so, so if 
you can find pictures of it, go online. The item has photos, and this mm -hmm. is great. So thank you to everybody. Um, I wanted to remind everyone that we have a lip sync coming up on Friday. Always fun, always a good laugh to see all the staff up there dancing, and the kids are so talented. That's their, just their strength is singing and dancing. So um, they really, it's, it's a lot of fun. So if you have a chance to come out, it benefits Nature's Classroom for our sixth graders next year, and it starts at 6.30. We also have recognition night of the last sixth grade class. Is that right? No, no <coughs> next year. One more, is one more to go, that's right. So, well, we do have recognition for the sixth grade on Monday night, and that's also at 6.30. And finally, our last day of school is on uh, next Friday, June 22nd, and we are following up that with the celebration at the Worcester Tornadoes. Link offered tickets, so a whole group of us are going over and we're singing the national anthem. Since we're so talented, should we be terrific? <laughs> <laughs> Singing. <laughs> we don't have anybody leading us, but if anybody wants to step up and come and be the conductor, we're good with that. So that'll be a lot of fun for our last, last night together for a while. So. If you can, if you can get a video copy of that, they'll probably have a film crew there to request that. Us singing? Yeah. <laughs> we want to see it. Okay, we'll I'll, I'll work on that, actually. though. It'd be nice to run it <laughs> <laughs> Just a thought. Okay. I will. I'll see if we. I, I don't. I'll, I, I can check it out. I don't know who handles that, but yeah, it actually would be fun to see them. The kids singing. The kids. If you want that lip sync video too, I can work on that one. I love the lip syncs. I did them all. <laughs> Basically, everyone starts started warning us that you can't do it due to the liability. The copyright infringements are so gross that you oh. can't do it. So you just have to come. If you get a band to come in and play the music, then you're not using somebody else's works. But you know, that would be the yeah. only way you could really do it. Someday. Or you could use some copyright. Unprotected. Give me a yeah. break. Yeah. What is this going to be? Never, <laughs> never <laughs> thought of that. So you just have to come. Oh, my God. Cable before. Oh, wow. Well, let me in. <laughs> okay, you're, you're all set. All right. Okay, we'll move on to the business items. <laughs> the agreement of the Aspet Valley Collaborative. I'll let you explain that short Mike. This is an amended agreement to include the addition of the graph in public schools. Uh, it's been recommended by the uh, Board of Directors. Uh, does require a vote of all of our three school committees plus all the other school committees in the uh, Aspen Valley Collaborative. It, uh, it's a great enhancement for us to, to enhance the capabilities of the collaborative to serve students with special needs. Uh, as you know, we've already voted at the region, so yeah, we have. Okay. Yeah. I know we didn't boil six. We, we did their last meeting, so. Boilson. Boilson did. Okay. Boilson did. Okay. So, just a just a vote to approve the uh, amended agreement. To okay. include the addition of the graph in public schools. Okay. Do I hear that motion? Would you like when to do second? I make a question? After, After the second. I second it. Okay. Are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just curious, is Grafton, would this be Grafton's second collaborative they're involved in, or have they not been part of that collaborative yet? They're probably exiting. Uh, from the collaborative that they're in. They've been trying to get into this collaborative for uh, a number of years now. We've held them off for a number of years, and we have a number of communities that want to enter into this collaborative, but the board of directors, which basically comprise the superintendents in the area, uh, you can get too big, I mean, geographically, because a lot of times uh, special education transportation is a big part of the collaborative where we save a lot of money. So, for example, we have a student going to Perkins School for the Blind, and and uh, Millbury does, or uh, you know, Shrewsbury does. We band together through the collaborative to provide that transportation. Mm -hmm. All three students go down, so we split the run three ways. So instead of having three buses go down, we have one. I actually was on the first committee that organized the Aspen Valley Collaborative way back in '75 or '76, whenever it came into being. And that's what it was. It was. Uh, Oh, and that's when it was originally uh, founded to do that and do bulk purchasing. But it gets to a point where sometimes it's just too big, and geographically people are just too far out of our boundaries and actually cost us money. <laughs> so we had to go to Timbuktu to pick somebody up before they come down, and the logistics start to get to be impossible. So 
Uh, but they're adjacent enough to us now because Millbury is also in the collaborative. They came in a, a couple of years ago. So now we have those communities are very contiguous to each other. So it's it's helpful to us. So it's a, it's a way to ex and we also can tuition students into those communities that have they have they have very special programs that we don't have for low incidence Money. students. So that's also helpful to us. signs the agreement um, when the agreement is all uh, said and done I mean oftentimes the superintendent will sign uh, representing because I'm going to designate you vote me in August right. to be your designated representative okay. to the board of directors usually it's, it's the superintendent of schools okay signs so for otherwise you need a couple more lines uh, right, right. <laughs> you need a lot more lines <laughs> you know <laughs> because a lot of, yeah I mean everybody in the show was two off right. two we're right. three uh, yeah, it, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, Even the vote right. district would require a signature of oh, oh. lots of people. Right. So, yeah. So we have a motion on the table and a second. As all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Um, <coughs> we have policy J I E pregnant students. Um, and this is for what a second read? This is your second your second read. This is your vote to approve. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, this so evening. This is and this is once again is, is uh, this policy uh, we've updated to have it comply with the current school law. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been approved at the regional level. It does eliminate some language that was not in line with the current state statute, specifically one requiring a physician's note uh, for a student uh, to attend school. And that's not in compliance with the law. Okay. So do I hear a motion to approve? Policy JIE pregnant students. So moved. I second it. Okay, is there any questions? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. And we have policy IHBAA special education program observation. And this is, I believe, a second read also. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, we've already uh, you know, voted this at the region, but this is to bring us in compliance with new current state regulations. Uh, regarding special education program observations this you know we do have policy for classroom observations but the state wants this something specifically in here for observing special education to be in compliance with the uh, with the federal government okay do I hear a motion to approve <coughs> so moved. I second it okay. any other any questions okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. Um, <clears throat> D is to designate a member of the central office to be copied on school committee emails. This is your policy uh, that requires an annual vote uh, by all three school committees to designate a member of the central office uh, to be copied on school committee uh, emails. Not only is it policy, it's state statute. In the past, you've designated uh, Cheryl Nelson to be that person. I'd recommend that you continue with that appointment. Okay. Motion to... So here, motion to approve Cheryl Nelson as the designated member of the central office to be copied on school committee emails. So moved. I second it. Okay. Anything else to be said? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. 2012-2013 um, student handbook. As you know, every year, I mean, uh, annually, the school committee does, does have to vote to approve the student handbook. Uh, if approved, the handbook then goes, uh, uh, well, we don't have to send the handbooks anymore to D.C., but we send an affidavit to them saying that you have approved it. Uh, anything that's in the handbook that has not been approved by the school committee can't be uh, empowered by the uh, building principal to put it to force. So it's very important that the school committee do vote to approve the uh, student handbook. And uh, I will defer to... Uh, Carol, to chat about some of the changes uh, in this year's handbook. Sure. In the in the past, we've gone over this line item by line item. We can do. I'd be happy to do that again this year. Um, the special piece that I just wanted to bring to your attention. If you notice on on page, like for example, page four, where you see an error bookmark, not defined. I just wanted to let you know that that has been taken care of. It was a technology glitch that we needed to work out, but we got uh -huh. straightened out today. So that will definitely change. Our, our handbook does appear online, so we don't copy these any longer for the majority 
of our families unless they, they request it. So it, that's a really nice piece as well. So we save a lot of paper. We, we did change the, the mission statement, as we talked about in the past. They had shared the mission statement that the school council voted on. And so I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. And then our core values that we change to respect ourselves, respect others, and respect our environment. That goes in line with all of the work we're doing with positive behavioral interventions and supports. And we continue to work um, to improve and learn more about that social curriculum. I added under um, number six, page 24, I actually did add the PBIS <coughs> the matrix for positive behavior that we'll be using next year. And um, this was worked on throughout the year. And it really was agreed upon um, understanding that we have a positive expectations in the school, in, in each area of the school, except for the classroom, where we want to talk more with the teachers about that. And certainly, um, they enjoy doing that with their class and developing that as a community individually. So we wanted to respect that piece for them to be able to create the, that part of the matrix for themselves. So, so that was a piece that we added. And also, um, the information on electronic devices with the permission form. That permission form would need to come in separately from the general technology user form that we get from the entire school community. All of the families turn that in. But this, this particular piece is directed towards students of, uh, in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And so we will also need to obtain copies of that signed permission form in order to enable them to use specific electronic devices in the school. And we have parameters around that as well that we use during, during the pilot period. And, and it worked very, very well. We, we really had no problems having that at all in place. So we're going to go forward. We added fourth grade for next year. And um, so we'll, hopefully that will continue to go as well. And it will give children more access to technology in the school. So by, by approving the changes, we're actually going to approve the mission statement. Is that necessary for us to approve the mission statement? Well, Mike, I, I talked about that at one point during the meeting. I, I'm, that has to go now to the state? Well, anything that's in the handbook. The mission statement's in the handbook. It's a change with the mission statement of the handbook. You need to vote to approve. I mean, by approving the handbook, you're, you're approving right. everything in it. So that's the vote of the committee. When we say we have, we certify this at the state, we say that the Berlin School Committee has voted to approve the handbook for the 2012-2013 school year. Anything in here at that point in time right. considered to be vetted out by you. So if there's a, 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 a mission change, if the change in this mission, mission statement is in this handbook, by voting the handbook, you vote the mission statement. So it's all encapsulated. If there's any difference of opinion on anything in here, you still can vote the handbook, and then you make exceptions. Okay. Okay, you can do it that way, too, if there's a problem with anything that you see in here. But it is imperative that the handbook be voted either as, as it is or with any exceptions with you may have. So Carol, she starts off the school year in, in uh, August, I mean, can enforce, particularly the discipline part of this, both okay. the transportation part of it, anything that's going to deal particularly with those, with those areas. And the other thing I just remembered what I was going to ask, the um, electronic devices and um, that policy, we had waived it for a period of a month or something. Mm -hmm. So are we, by approving the handbook, put it, we need to put a policy in place that includes that? Or we just waived the policy, I guess. I remember you waiving the policy. Right. I don't remember you creating a, we a didn't new create policy. We create a new policy. Not that I'm aware of. But I, the com I, I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm not certain it was waiving the policy. There was a piece in the handbook that said that electronic devices at that time were were forbidden. Is actually the word um, as part of of distracting objects or weapons that students mm -hmm. could bring to school. Certain types. It was it was in that paragraph. Right. So we we waived that statement. And opened it up to bring the electronic devices in. That, okay. So it was part of the handbook, but I'm, I'm not certain it was really under a waiving a pop particular policy. Yeah, I think we, I understand your point. I mean, I'd have to pull the 
the big policy book out and go look in there to see if there's something in there on that. I don't, I don't believe that there is. Oh, no. or possibly looking back at the minutes to see what was the vote we took. I mean, that maybe that would make more sense. And you know, if, if um, anybody on the school committee would like to hold back that particular item or anything, we could do that, or we could prove it and see what we need to do next. Yeah, we got. I could go back and I could look at it, see if you do have it as actually as a separate policy. I mean, if you have it as a separate policy in your policy book, then you come back at a later meeting and you could vote as a separate policy with you to be amended in the policy book. Right. So we'd have to look at the policy and we'd have to look at the minutes, I would assume, because I think the minutes may have said uh, for two months or a month or something. I can't remember. Yeah, 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 so I'd want to make yeah. sure that yeah. it's done you know it's, that we're waiving it for longer than that. If if we're making change. this making this change, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I wouldn't waive it. I'd go in. I just change the policy whole, wholesale. Yeah. Just change the policy whole time. Right, right. So if I understand you correctly, we voted in with the handbook, and then if we ha actually have a policy on it, then we go back and, and change, change the policy. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. And I'm thinking it would be if it was there, it would be under the technology user policy. Yeah, I know there's no separate policy for this. Right. There, is, there. I don't think that. I, I'm my. If we, if we're going to change that policy, that policy exists for just permanently, devices. If, if we only change it temporarily, we need to change it permanently. The policy. Or, we, or create it because I don't. I, I right. don't, Not certain we really we have any policy on electronic devices no. at this point. So it may just be within the handbook itself. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's right. And the technology user policy that we do have in place is focuses on the use of the internet at the school and, and safely using right. that piece. This piece wasn't even it, in it, anybody's it, mindset when that was created, so it, it may be... This is much clearer to me. If what we were addressing was in the handbook to begin with, and we waived the handbook, okay, and tonight you vote the new handbook with, with these changes, then you need to do nothing else. Okay. If you have it, it's tucked in that policy, big policy book right, someplace. Right. Okay, and now I don't think it is. I mean, I think it, no, you, I think you pulled right. it out of the handbook and you just waved that piece of the handbook. Uh, then we'd have to go back and change that, but we can look that up for you. Okay. But I don't think it is. I think yeah. it was just a, a suspension okay. of what was in here at this point, right. at that right. point in time. But okay. we'll, we'll vet it out, we'll check it out. Okay. I only had one more question. Sure. Um, Carol, I looked at the handbook online and you say you've, let's see. You've deleted Appendix A and Appendix E. Can you just tell me what they were? Because they're not in here anymore. Right. You know what? <laughs> and, and that Appendix A and Appendix E, it said Appendix A and Appendix E, but it didn't go to anything. It was, there was no, it just oh. was, it, because it was lifted from policies, from the big policy oh, book, so was it, it just read Appendix, it also <laughs> came yeah. with Appendix A and Appendix E because it was Appendix A and Appendix E of the policy book, not of our handbook. Okay. So I didn't so want to just confuse people that. to think they were finding this as an appendix to anything in particular because it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so How's this, that? Is, this is a little nettoyer. I'm excuse me. This is a little cleanup item then. Yeah, it was bugging okay, me. Sorry. That's how why we took it out because okay, right. <laughs> it didn't go to anything. Yeah. So it just. Oh, okay. I I understand. So the, the other the other probably also to mention to you too, deleting uh, number seven, deleting the bullying cyberbullying report form. When we approved that last year. That was in anticipation of using that as a reporting form. We have not used that that piece. I've used something differently, uh, uh, different. Um, and since then, we're also talking about revisiting that whole piece as part of the PBIS work. So we're. Um, I've shared with the teachers yesterday. Actually, we didn't even get a chance to talk about it, but I, they did have copies. We're we're going to try to talk about it next week, looking at a different way of reporting incidents that occur in the classroom and levels of levels of those incidents and times that they would come down to be reported to the principal's office. So it's it's going to take some time for us to walk through all of that, but we're not using that particular one in the book. Okay. So. Any questions? Um, I guess maybe um, to ask Dr. DeBula, there's a part of me that um, I'm really glad with the work that you've done and the mission statement and the core values. But there is a charge to the school committee that you know we are supposed to set vision and set you know so 
so forth, and obviously we haven't gotten there yet. In your practices with schools that you've worked with, does it usually come from the bottom up or does it come from the top down? Our school committee, you know, um, I guess looking forward, I think it's great that you have something, um, but yet I, I still feel that as a school district or as a school committee that we should be um, a vision of our own to a certain extent to shoot for. Um, so uh, do you have any wisdom for us on this? I don't know what the question is yet. <laughs> trying to understand Basically, the question. <laughs> does, it, does it usually come from the bottom up? And you kind of like the vision is kind of what we are. So, or is it like okay, this is really what we want to be? You know, we want to, you know. Most of the time, your mission statements for individual schools oftentimes are generated by your school councils, okay, and your faculty and uh, the school councils representing the parents, and they're very specific to that particular the the, the ongoing. Uh, operation of the schools and that generally it does come from the grassroots that's what school councils are supposed to be about they're supposed to be talking about in school improvement plans they're supposed to be submitting those school improvement plans to the yeah, school committee for you to uh, accept them and take them into uh, consideration when 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 uh, constructing budgets okay and to enact upon them and also that you're getting feedback from parents school councils school, school teachers all that mechanism uh, to make sure that there's in there's constant communication between Grassroots, shall we say, the people that are in the in the trenches and, re and receiving the education to you as the governing board, because you are really the governing board. Okay. Um, sometimes the 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 view of, of the of the school committee regarding a mission statement from the school committee, uh, a lot of times will be in concert with, with the school, but may might be more global. Okay. Or might be more specific, or might be more far-reaching. You know, down the road, like a five-year plan, for example. You know, do you have a five-year plan? Ten-year plan today doesn't make any sense to write those anymore. But even five years is a way out. But you know, uh, you know, a two, three-year plan to, to to see where you're going in terms of your, your mission statement. So I mean, uh, and the goals from those mission statements. So like, I mean, a real global mission statement might be, for example, you know, the visualization of the or the harmonizing of all the educational. Um, uh, programs going on in the entire Berlin Wilson School, and that, that you know, that's a general mission statement. Then you break that; you can break that down to specific goals, the things that you want to study. So, um, which, but once you, I'm, I'm sorry, did you want to? Yeah, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I'm doing okay. Yeah, no. All right. I want to ahead too when you're done. So, um, a lot of times the mission statements are are generated uh, from from the schools, but it's brought to the school committee. In, in concert, you know, you have a right to approve them and take a look at them too. So I think there's a, a difference. I know we met in was it August last year or was it June? I, I forgot when we had met. The combined boards had met right here at one point in time when we talked about values, mm -hmm. and school committee values. We had a very lengthy conversation on school committee values and put a lot up on the board about right. the values that that you hold near and dear that you want to foster. You know, uh, from in the pre-K through grade 12 and the entire school school district you're putting that together and you talked about a lot of those value statements and some of those and then you had mission statements and you, a lot of times you apply those to diverse various different kinds of, of areas but uh, so I think it's a mission statement is like maybe directed for much more specifically to Berlin Memorial and uh, and that might change you know it changes a little bit to at the Hunter Regional High School because of the age of the of the students and the goals for the students of course I mean excellence by fostering respect responsibility resourcefulness how can you argue with that? Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. But sometimes it's for the, every school. It's going to be targeted a little bit differently, given the, the, the end goals that you that you're looking for at that at that point in time. I guess a question tying into that is I know that Carol and the school council in the future are going to be looking at long term vision or some sort of vision statement. Yeah, that, is that correct? That's what I wanted to add yeah. on. I think this will be helpful to to know this. So once we had looked at the mission statement, which is usually a very short statement, um, it's who we are, um, what we represent. The, the, the larger picture is the vision statement. The vision statement includes your values and beliefs of, of the school, the school community, which includes the town. And it really um, also talks about our, our vision of where we want to go, where we want to be five, 10 years down the road, as Mike, Mike had talked about. That being said, after we created the mission statement, the school council started taking a very serious look at um, and having a, a really some deep conversations about 
who we are and, and what, what our values are as a school. We've begun that conversation. We left off with our June meeting um, with the charge to me over the summer to be working on a draft of a survey that we do want to send out um, to families um, and, and certainly you will be seeing this piece and, and we'll be sharing that and talking about that to gather information from the community at large to find out how we can create a vision statement that represents us, that takes in all of us, students, teachers, um, and parents, you know, family, school, and, and town folks as well, and to add input into that. So that'll be a much deeper, broader conversation and, and uh, statement about us that we'll be making. We, uh, you can't do that in a couple of meetings. So we felt that we had gotten quite far in even having the mission statement. Um, but when we got into the vision statement, we realized that that's a, that's a whole separate being. And um, so we want to give that time and work through that. So that probably will be a good part of what we're doing with school council next year. So um, I've had a, a couple of folks on that council already say that they would like to stay on next year and continue that conversation. So when you have a lot on your plate to talk about for, as far as Berlin Elementary is concerned yeah. you know, in future years. I mean, you got to take a good hard look at your student enrollment. Obviously, that's going to impact upon Absolutely. the vision of what the school is going to look like you know, over the next, uh, say, the next five, six years. I mean, that's that's huge. Uh, another one in terms of pedagogy, in terms of looking at technology and instruction, how are you going to bring technology into the classroom? If you're leading it, beginning the leading edge school systems, uh, school districts right now, the way they're using technology. Uh, I mean, a lot of blended instruction. I mean, a lot of the things going on at home with technology too, in, in terms of using that. Know, very is a very uh, is, a, is a great tool you know in the classroom and then of course all the things you need to make that go you know the infrastructure to make that go the teacher training you need to make that go the acquisition of the equipment to make that go is that important to the community so it depends from community to community some communities I mean struggle with uh, immigration okay, you don't have that here but for some communities that's a vision statement how they're going to deal with immigration English language learners I mean uh, a culturalization of, of students so it's specific to, to schools. Thank you. Um, do you have a question? <laughs> I do. Go ahead. You always do. Uh, on, on the matrix second. on um, page 24, <coughs> under the bus section, respect ourselves and respect others, um, hands and feet to self is written under both categories is, is it meant to be under both or is that a typo yes. nope some of them do go across across okay. to both respecting ourselves right to keeping our keeping ourselves safe on the bus so that when we're not oh like hurt. sticking your hand out the window that yeah. right that's okay. an issue um, and then also certainly Thank respecting others right okay Yeah, you'll see that a few times, uh, probably a few times in here that there are a couple that go across. Okay. This was very kind of, it, it was humorous at times to put together because you, it's a positive, your positive language in this. It's not, it doesn't say, you'll see, it doesn't say don't do this and don't do that. It, it's a positive way of saying these things. So a couple of these were kind of challenging because, you know. Toilet responsibly. Particularly into the bathroom. <laughs> That's impossible. Just saying. <laughs> a positive way. Yes. Yes. Mm. Um, I just have a quick question about, um, you, and you may have already answered it, but not being at the school council meeting and not hearing the conversation, yeah. was there any discussion about um, having each student achieve personal and academic excellence? Yeah, there was a lot of conversation around that because we wanted to acknowledge the individual child and the fact that for each child, excellence means something different. For each person, excellence means something different. And yet also um, recognize that there are bars that we have to set for students. Um, we honor students who have achieved academic excellence, but, but some children, academic excellence isn't Achievable for them in the way well, we present. Well, I mean, personal and academic, is, you know, excellence, so that it can mean both. Right. They can. It couldn't be or or be either. Right. 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 So. Okay. I think that's the way we were interpreting that meaning. Okay. So. 
because it, it, I mean, if you read this and you didn't know we were talking about Burla Memorial School, you wouldn't be able to tell it was a school's mission, mission statement. Oh, so I, I see what you, so you, to add ac academic excellence into that? So but if that's already implied. meant by personal excellence, I mean, that was what I was asking because the school council may have had the conversation. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And, you know, I was just a little surprised that there wasn't anything academic in the mission statement. But you had the conversation. We, we did have the conversation around okay. that. And that was, that was the, I don't want to say the consensus or the understanding and the language of that, but that's what it mean, would mean if, if academic excellence is your personal excellence, then that is your excellence. Mm -hmm. Versus okay. some children, for some children there are other goals right. of, of achievement. I compliment you for writing the mission statement because I try to avoid them at all costs. <laughs> every word has, <laughs> right, and it's, it's, it's yeah. difficult because every word has <laughs> meaning to it and um, we weighed every word really heavily, right. carefully. So even the last, I mean we were working on the last part for quite some time, the support of the entire community originally said something different. and. Um, just didn't sit well with everybody, but we spent a whole meeting trying to craft that the end of that sentence, that phrase, the way we wanted it to sound and the way we wanted it to mean. Part of that is they were going to, you know, we, at first we wanted to put in at first like in the entire school community, but we also felt it was a responsibility, and this we needed the support of the town at large, this, the town's people. You do. Are you on the school council? No. Okay. All right, so I guess um, if there's any other questions, we should ask them now. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion. Motion to approve the 2012-2003 Burma Memorial Student Handbook as presented. I second it. Okay, any other questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 I, I, do, I do hope that when you go back to your school council that maybe ask my question if it truly should be left out. I mean, I, I would like to see them. Maybe, maybe it would be in the, um, not the mission statement, the, in the, vision, the, vision, the statement. vision statement. But to push, you know, raising the bar and um, academic excellence. of executive session minutes and um, do you like to talk about that Mike? You owe me big time. I told Cheryl <laughs> that if he doesn't want to do it, you do, he, don't make him do that. <laughs> That's how you're getting your money's worth. You're getting your money's worth. Okay. <laughs> she had this on her agenda to finish up. Yeah, I know she did. I couldn't say no. <laughs> Uh, well, as you know, uh, under the open meeting law, uh, we're required at, at regular uh, reasonable intervals <laughs> to review the minutes of executive sessions uh, so, so to see if they can be released to the general public. So I started reading the executive session minutes back on uh, going back to July 8th, 1981. It's been a while since you've released them. So uh, <laughs> anyhow. There were, well, I think we did do it, but maybe we didn't go back quite that far. Uh, you released some yeah. re recently in the last in the last uh, five or six years. Right, uh, right. Yeah, 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 you, you released uh, you know, most of them through. So right. it's just in the past. You know, once again, it just skips some chapters. You know, people just forget to do them. So anyhow, I went back and read about myself <laughs> in some of these minutes. I said, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you get to decide if you want to release. I them. redacted them all. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Anyhow, I did uh, review the uh, two sections of minutes. Uh, one section I reviewed uh, from July 8, 1981, all the way through June 14, 1995. That's where I stopped at noontime today. So, uh, which catches you up 
I actually cook quite a bit. So I did uh, go through all of those. Uh, most of them are not, most of them are very benign. Or you generally have to do with negotiations. So right. it's, you know, we propose this, they propose that. I mean, it's all old news anyhow. Well, I got to tell you, some of the percentage increases back then I looked at, I said, "Wow!" <laughs> I said, "Those are the days when things were rolling." <laughs> so, uh, uh, but other ones that personnel matters, I looked at some of those and things out of there. I, I redacted if I some sped things that came up from time to time. I redacted quite a bit of that because. If you read it through thoroughly, you still might be able to identify uh, the person that's in there, although they, they were reported just by team numbers. It was very well done, but still, you know, if you've been around town, you know, you know the person on this street and that street, anyhow. So I redacted all of that, so I think you're all set for, from those dates. And then I also looked at the dates, uh, so uh, just for the record, so July 8, 1981 to June 14, 1995. The other sec the other ones I looked at, I'm not quite sure why they were pieced out this way, this way, but I did. Was November 17th of 2009 through to August uh, 22nd, 2011. So I, I looked at all of those, and my recommendation would be that you could you could release those minutes. Okay. After Cheryl gets through going through, well, like I said, 90% of them it's it's not an issue. It's just here and there when things came up that I felt were identifying or. Great. Be considered to be derogatory according with the state statute. Okay, then I'll have Cheryl redact those. And anything that's not ongoing at the at Oh, anything that's, uh, that's ongoing, right. uh, you know, I'm not assuming there's anything between 81 and 95 that's not ongoing, no. but uh, yeah, anything that has anything ongoing today obviously would, we would not release those, uh, those minutes. So, do you want to vote this evening of the school? It's committee? completely at your discretion. Or you, uh, you can come down and in fact, uh, I, I, I have them right here if you would like to look at them this evening. Mm. <laughs> See, I was supposed to go in and read them, learn that wasn't I? And you've done, so, you've done such a great job. Whatever you like to do. It's up to you. I mean, uh, <coughs> the, the ones in blue and the ones in, <laughs> ones in blue, the ones in blue and green, uh, no issues. The ones in pink were ones where we thought there might be issues, and that's where I have um, some uh, redactions. In, in those pinks. So if you want to come in, you want to review them again, you want to take a look at just the pink, then completely up to you. I'm good. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Where are they released to? Do they go online somewhere or just no, we, anyone we, who wants we, we, to we read just them keep now them, can come you know, in somebody and read them if they wanted to? If we okay. had voted to release them, then if someone would happen to come in and ask for, okay. you know, July of 1981, you know, <laughs> then they could okay. have okay. a copy of them. But I don't think yeah, most of them are very benign and almost all tied up with, you know, basically negotiations, you know. Propose this, let's propose that, let's propose that, da, 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 da. <laughs> you, like, you loved that reading, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, highlight of my highlight of my days. <laughs> so let's see. Do you, so do you want a motion to approve the, the release executive? of the exact meeting session minutes of the, the dates I gave to uh, Adam. You got them? Yeah. Okay. I didn't catch them. The, the month and everything, the 81 yeah, to 95. Pursuant to Mrs. Nelson actually going through and she, she, she hasn't done anything with them yet, you know, so. Okay. We're, you know, we're doing with the redactions that need to be done. Okay. So moved. I second it. Okay, anything else? Thank you, Dr. DeBrew. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You're welcome, you're welcome. It was interesting reading <laughs> know a lot of those people back in the day you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. thank you again so you want to answer let's see 2012-2000 meeting dates um, I don't know if you want to defer to that to the region. That's what the boils and people did. They said, well, why don't we just wait for the region and set the region dates first, see where we go with there from that. And well, I think they said that because they know I have a conflict with Wednesday nights. And so I was hoping to set, and I know that Carol is involved with, I was hoping for Thursday nights, and I know that Carol's involved with Link, which is generally the first Thursday of the month. Right. And so I was hoping that we could set the Berlin School Committee meetings to be the second Thursday of the month. Okay. And then the Building Committee meeting. Um, I 
It's on Thursday. But yeah, but isn't will, it also the that? It'll be changed. I think it's the third Thursday, isn't it? Is it? No, it's this week. It's oh, that's right. Tomorrow. It's this week. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the second. Yeah, because it was always second Tuesday, then mm -hmm. we went to Thursday. I don't know. You know, then I go back, but. It used to matter to the central office. Did it? Why did it matter? Why? Did because it matter? they they didn't want to do well, that. I think to do people three just got reports, set on, so. on school committee meeting on Wednesday nights, and not just that, but I think also that the administration, particularly at the high school, <coughs> try and stay away from Wednesday nights as much as possible when planning things for students, because there were members on the school committee that wanted to go to those things. So I think they tried to take that into consideration in terms of doing their planning to stay away from, from those evenings. Well, I, I remember mean, correctly, one to, theory is. Yeah, and they may just have to readjust what night they stay away from if we change it to a Thursday or whatever. We could request that. Yeah, for sure. Could we just, I would do, do we plan to meet in July and August? I guess is that a question that I would just like to have an idea if we are planning on July, July, just, July's always been tough for you. I mean, like I tell you, last July you did not. Okay, needed the boils and needed the region because July just being a heavy vacation month points up being exceptionally difficult to get everybody together. You did me. I, I certainly would encourage you to meet in August. Okay, uh, prior to the beginning of the school year, all kinds of things come up. You know that really need to be vetted out by the committee, need to be voted by the committee. You might have to deal with personnel. Could be, lots of things could could happen. So I would I would recommend you you meet in. Uh, August. Is there anything that you see that may need school committee's attention in July? Oh, in July, no. I'll okay. put August, yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you want to, is it all right with you if we wait until after the region meeting and share, you know, that Just suggestion and see what happens? Next yeah, Thursday. sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's fine. I mean, if there is a, a need for a July meeting for some reason with the new superintendent, Maybe we just stick to Wednesday. As long as but of course, conflict, yeah. yeah, and as long as it's not the holiday or something, right? Which is the I don't think probably no, we, don't need we do need to meet in July, but she would have to notify us, I guess, after she came on board if she wanted to meet with us. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just wait until after the, the region meeting then to make a decision. Sure. Okay. All right. That was easy. Um, public school committee comments. Public. I recommend you take that over next year. <laughs> <laughs> school committee comments. Oh, I, I had a question. Um, in the minutes, I was reading uh, about the water quality testing. Has there been anything further? Have you learned anything from uh, I knew you were going to ask about that. Yeah, I've been really hounding that company. I mean, I've had to send email after email after email, call and call and call. Joe's called. I even told Joe, I said, call him up. I said, you've got my permission to say, geez, that director of finance, she's really on my <laughs> back because the superintendent's on her back and the school committee's on his back. Anything, just Boy, try that and see if it works. <laughs> But um, we were supposed to have it last Friday. Now, you don't know how many times he's promised it. So he called again today and was supposed to be getting it. I don't know what it is with this company, but we're already kind of invested with the company. They've already right. had the DEP people come down from the state, and they've done their thing. So I don't know, but I'm really aggravated with this company. Really, really aggravated. So, right. I mean, I should have it any day because we cannot proceed without it. Right. And the state is tied into that, DEP. They have to approve of what we're doing, and right. we have to do that before we can move on with the, the boiler repair. So, yeah, I don't know what, you know, the water testing reports we get regularly. I mean, right. They just come in, and, you know, no problem. But this, this piece, I never would have thought that it would have um, been like that, to be honest with you. Hmm. So we should get it any day because I called Joe again today because I knew you would have to, which is which I can understand. Oh, I I've been asking too. Read the minutes. I've been asking too. You know. All right. Actually, I did mean to mention it along with the roof, and I, I forgot because it wasn't on the agenda. But yeah. Okay. Well, you know. So as soon as we get that, you know, we'll we'll get yeah, something out and um, move forward from there. Because again, it's very paramount that we get that because as we were told before, it, it could be very. Not very costly resolution, or it right. could be a very costly. I mean, we won't know until we get that report. 
to move forward. So, and I just picked this up in the uh, envelope in the copy room here from the town accountant, and it says something here about special article forms due by July 16th. It doesn't say on here anywhere that I see that we may be having a special town meeting, but maybe we are. Or maybe we need to check that out. Oh, oh I think now is that, you oh, this? you know what? I wonder if that would they, I, I believe, I can't see it from here, but we do get a form, and all town accountants do this at year end. It's okay. a regular year end thing. Okay. It's just to, for us to say, we still have these articles. Right. Yes, we are still planning on doing this, okay. and, and we're not closing them out. Because if you, you definitely, things can change. If you definitely aren't going to use funding for the original right. purpose of the article, you have to turn it back because it has to be repurposed and revoted on by a town meeting. Right. And also, okay, actually, Cheryl probably, and I have been working means. on those. We've closed out a bunch of them. We've been, you know, $30 or $900. We know that, like, carpeting or this or that has been right. done, and so we're going to send a letter back saying you can close it out so that okay. money can go back into free cash. Okay. Yeah. That's what that means, then. Yeah. There is a special town meeting plan to discuss a change to the mitigation package from Highland Commons. There is a definite... Well, that was what... Is there a date? No. Okay. But there were going to be meetings first, and then when they're ready... Well, we did have a, 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 a meeting for um, employees or something, to, uh, special employees or something, to talk about it. Ten officers. Ten. Right, ten officers. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what the outcome of that was, so I didn't know if they decided to go ahead and do that or not. That was the, the anticipated plan of action. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Um, am I allowed to give a quick bus update? You know, I was going to ask you because, um, yeah, sure, I guess, because um, I know I wasn't able to make that meeting if you okay. want to share. Well, uh, bus is the Burlington United to support our students group, and mostly this past year we've been working on PR. And attendance at the meetings is very dismal, except for one that I, usually I just send it to my mailing list, unless it's a special event like the PBIS meeting in March. So this past Monday we had a meeting and we decided next year we would just meet three times, October, April, and January. And what we'd like to do is send out a notice a month in advance to both schools um, and asking people to get back to us if they want to talk about a particular topic, say school choice or whatever's on people's mind. Because for this past year, and half almost it's been really nice way for a school committee to talk to parents and find out what's happening um, on both sides of the spectrum so I kind of like to see if that can continue but also so anyway so then about a week before each meeting I would send an announcement via email to both schools broadcast wide so forget my distribution list if after this year the attendance is really paltry again I'll just disband the group but I kind of wanted to see if having a few just a few dates would increase the attendance and if there was a need for it for people to feel like they had another medium to talk about school issues and so then also we did we did do a proof on um, the brochure that we want to give to realtors so right now, all, all the administrators have copies, so I'm going to give copies to the school regional school committee as well. Um, Jessica Meltzer helped me a lot with this, and we don't know very much about Tahanto at all, so mostly we're seeking a lot of feedback on the Tahanto pieces because we're not even sure if everything we have in here is accurate. And um, so if you just want to mark on these, and I'm not a PR person, neither is Jessica, but fortunately she was an English person, so that was very helpful. So we're just really seeking feedback and we're hoping to finalize this brochure over the summer when hopefully things are a little bit quieter so that maybe in the fall we could order it from this Is there a process that we need to follow as far as this is concerned? Or? It's a private nonprofit a organization. It doesn't have anything to do with the school department, yeah. so uh, they basically can do what they want. I mean, if it's going to be distributed, you know, through the schools, your policy says it normally it goes through mm -hmm. the superintendent to be anything that's mm -hmm. going to go through schools should go through the superintendent. Something like this, though, I think the superintendent should, it, it, before it goes to be distributed, the superintendent, this is my opinion, should send it to the school committee, let the school committee look at it just because, you know, it's talking about the public schools. We want to make sure it's accurate and everything. Mm -hmm. 
right. is, right. is, uh, is correct, but mm -hmm. uh, I think pretty much do is, that's my understanding mm -hmm. of the statute. Yeah, so is that know, separate? Yeah. Quite if it's quite, but, but if you're going to bring it to the schools and distribute it through the yeah. schools, mm -hmm. or use a school medium to send it out, then it would come into your normal policy and any distribution of, of, of material you have policy on. Okay. 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 So right now the plan is to uh, have it approved from all the school administration and school committee, that's a good idea, and and give it to realtors so that when a family moves into Berlin, the realtor would give this to the family. Mm -hmm. That's that's really, we're just starting, we're just trying to have the schools, new people in town be aware of the good name of the schools and also for the realtors to maybe they'll actually read it and say, oh yeah, these schools, just because we had heard that I don't know if it's accurate or not. We only heard that realtors really aren't promoting the school systems. So that could be false, but <laughs> we just trying to. The first question the parents check out when they the walk schools. They have children. Mm -hmm. right. the schools. The schools. So, okay. <laughs> all right. So that's what this is all about. I'll give you this copy so you don't have to do a black and white. Yeah, yeah. That, okay. Thanks. So that's it. So, did you, uh, I mean, I don't know. If well, I can talk about this with um, you and, and Dr. Jabril later, but about if it's an agenda item at some point or... Oh, for a final approval? Or, or, if, or if, if it's it, even it, necessary. What, it all depends on the right. distribution. The distribution is going to go through the schools or through any medium of the schools that it falls under your policy. Okay, and normally the superintendent looks at that. Something of this magnitude, if I was looking at it, I would probably, I would send it to you people to take a take a look at it and review too. Um, if it isn't and something they're going to distribute on their own, okay, to, uh, without going through the schools or the medium of the schools, <laughs> they certainly have the ability to do that as an independent agent. Okay. But I think they're taking you know, the right steps, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Be well, accurate. No, I think good, they're taking yeah. the right steps, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Give it to administration yeah. and give information on it to make sure you have an accurate for sure. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fantastic because I know parents. You know, any parent that's going anywhere is going to look at the school. They have children going to the schools. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, awesome. that's great. All right. Uh, let's see future agenda items. Okay. You. Well, you'll have a, a public <laughs> hearing on, on a teacher evaluation, which I've talked with Nadine about. So you. Have that, you have to have that at three levels, okay. So my conversations with Superintendent like uh, Ekstrom is that it should be done either August or September, no later than September, in my opinion. Okay, that's a formal public hearing to go over the new teacher, new mandated teacher evaluation for public input. And uh, so that's one thing that, 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 that definitely should be done. Okay. And then we have the, also the audits. Okay. And and that was for end of year report and student activity, which hadn't been done in the past, but we, we didn't still have a end lot of, of year report yeah. and student activity fund. Mm -hmm. And probably your roof report will, will be ready by then, too. By August. Yeah. Oh, be. yeah. Well, yeah, it should be. It should oh, be yeah. By then. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's not on the agenda, but I mean, Carol, I'm sure, is going to present an update on personnel and enrollment and typical things that you bus and you know, all those kind of But those, those would be things that you have, yeah. That, that okay. Should, oh. Should be on each other. In the water report. Hopefully, hopefully it won't God help us if it's not ready by August, huh? <laughs> God. I better get it like in my email tomorrow. Right. Well, that will be the region. Oh, we did. And then, and then we'll probably put it on again okay. for Berlin after that. Okay. Okay. Are we? Do you have that on the region agenda? Is the meeting dates? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Um, executive session. We do have need for. Yes, we do. Session. We need to just to close out some litigation here. To discuss uh, strategy with respect to litigation, take a roll call vote. Only to open. Only to um, reconvene into. The for the purpose of adjournment. Right. We can make a motion together. I could do that. Then. So, <laughs> okay, good. So moved. All right. Do I hear a second? I second it. Okay. Ruth? Aye. Chris? Aye. Aye. Angela? Okay.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for the village to make a motion.